Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at macroeconomic objectives and then we'll be finishing off with a summary. So we're going to define the macroeconomy as the summation of all consumers and firms in a country or across several countries. So we're putting together two of our economic agents which are our consumers or households and our firms and this is going to give us our macroeconomy. So we're considering everybody all together into one big image and we're going to analyze it. And the macroeconomy is often controlled by our final economic agent, which is the government. Now we can think about the central bank as well as a combination of the two in terms of the management of the macroeconomy. And these two parties or public bodies are going to work together to achieve certain objectives. So both of these are going to work together in order to meet some objectives that will be desirable for an economy. And we're going to see how both the government and the central bank can use government policy measures in order to achieve these objectives. But the first step is to identify our objectives. And there are seven main macroeconomic objectives that we have to think about. So the first is economic growth. So we can measure economic growth in terms of GDP and see how our GDP grows. Stable inflation, so we want to maintain a stable price level in the economy. Have low unemployment, so there are plenty of jobs in the economy and people are employed into them. Having low inequality to make sure that there is a fair distribution of income in the country. Having a balanced government budget, so we are not overspending as a government. The balance of payments to ensure that there is some stability between the money leaving and entering our country and our economy. And also the protection of the environment to ensure that there is longevity and sustainability in the economy as well. Now with all of these objectives, sometimes the government will be using supply side policies in combination with demand side policies, which can help to achieve these seven macroeconomic objectives by influencing the aggregate supply rather than the aggregate demand, but we will cover this in a bit more detail later. So let's think about stable economic growth, which is going to be very important as increasing economic growth allows for standards of living to increase. So on this graph here, where we can see the real GDP index for the UK over time, we can see that there is an increasing level of GDP over time from a base year in 2008. So we can see that there are increasing living standards relative to 2008. However, if economic growth, which is too rapid, is undesirable as it is unsustainable, as the economy does not have enough resources in it. And economic growth, which is too rapid, can also cause increases in inflation. And inflation is the general increase in the price level over a certain period of time. And we'll cover the topic of inflation in a bit more detail in further videos. And it is important to keep inflation stable to maintain confidence in the economy. So if there is really high inflation, then people might start to lose confidence in the value of their currency, which leads to hyperinflation. And therefore, having low confidence in the economy is undesirable because it means the power and the value of the currency in the economy has almost diminished and it's pretty much useless and we might end up in a bartering economy. And we can learn about some of the costs of hyperinflation as well in other videos too. And the target for stable inflation is normally going to be set by the central bank of a country, which is an independent body. So in the UK, there is the Bank of England. And when I mean independent, it's not that it's not within the remit of the public sector. It's that they are independent of the government. So the government can't tell the Bank of England what to do. So the Bank of England set their inflation target at 2%. And that's considered a stable target. Now we're going to learn more about each of these objectives later in other videos in the macroeconomics course, but just make sure that you understand what these seven are in terms of their loose definitions and also their applications, and that's going to set you up really well for understanding the rest of macroeconomics. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you're looking for an amazing A-level economics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level economics a walk in the park.